Hey guys, James Simon here, and in this tech tip video, we're going to be looking at one of the very brand new features to FL Studio version 21, and that is the audio file separation, whatever you want to call it, the AI program that you can use to separate out the different stems within a full track itself. So we're looking at my track Purely Beautiful with Stein Grove, and what we can do is we can separate out the kick drum and the percussion, the uh, the vocals and the bass line and the instruments. It's probably going to become a very controversial technique as it's a way that we can kind of take parts from someone else's track without permission. And I wouldn't recommend it. I can't really say, I can't really kind of promote it myself, but you could essentially use it to take vocals from someone else's track and put them in your own track, make bootlegs and things like that. Obviously, this becomes a very gray area, a very sketchy area. When it comes to copyright infringement, you can't do this really. You can't just take someone else's sounds and use them for yourself and release them. You know, that is against it's a copyright infringement. And, you know, so you could eventually end up getting tracks taken down from Beatport if you release it or, you know, sued money taken away from you. So you have to be very, very careful. What it is good for, and I, what I would say is, if you want to make bootlegs of, say, an old vocal track that you really, really like, and you want to grab the vocals from it, um, you could use it in this way. So let's go ahead and just have a look. So all we need to do is super simple. We go up to our pro, uh, we've got to our waveform here. We've got it loaded in. I've got the time signature set at the correct time signature, and then we click on the options area here, and we go to extract stems from sample. So we can now choose which stems we want to extract and let's just use all of them for the for this first example and then we hit extract. And there we go. As we can see, it's separated out all the individual sounds. Uh, it's got them named here. So we've got drums, bass, instruments and vocals. Let's have a quick listen to see how these sounds. I'll turn it down slightly. So as we can hear, we've just got the drums playing there. If I go to the actual track itself. And then the drums. So as you can hear, it doesn't sound quite right. There are some kind of audible artifacts in it. And this is the AI algorithm that FL Studio have incorporated. It's not perfect. And you can understand why. It's somehow able to take out the individual parts itself. And it's obviously a very kind of complex process. Let's have a listen to the bass. So that's sounding even worse. That is not how it sounded in my original. It's got this kind of weird warping sound, but it's kind of there. And then let's have a listen to the instruments. So it's got all of my backing kind of atmosphere sounds, but it's also got the top end of the bass line in there. It hasn't been able to manage to identify that the kind of top end clickiness of the bass line, um, it didn't extract it and put it into this bass here. So let's put these two together. And obviously that sounds a little bit more natural. It still sounds a little bit odd. Let's go ahead and look at the vocals, which I'm sure everyone is most excited to have a look at. In a world of darkness, you are a beacon of light, a heart of beauty. So it is working kind of and kind of not. There's still quite a lot of audible artifacts going on there. I think it's like the click from the kick drum or maybe the bass line again, the top end. That is kind of like bleeding into it. It really doesn't get it 100% perfect. And this is why I wouldn't recommend using this to try and steal other people's sounds. Definitely not. That is really not a great idea at all. However, I would kind of say, yeah, if you did want to find like an old classic track that you're fond of the vocals, you could use this technique to remove remove the vocals and do like a bootleg just for your live sets. You should never use it to kind of get it released or do a cover of it. That is a big no-no. But you might want to use it just as a something for your live set, something fun for you to do. And this could be a quite a nice way of, of kind of getting a workaround if you don't have the vocals or can't find them online or whatever like that. But if we kind of put these back together, let's compare all of these to the actual original itself. So this is with all of them put in together. So 
So you can hear that now it's pretty much exactly the same as the original. All of those audible artifacts we could hear on the individual um, waveforms itself, well, they kind of merge back in to create the whole picture itself. So what I'll do is I'll keep these playing and then I'll solo the original and you'll hopefully be able to hear that there's pretty much no difference at all. Really, maybe there was a tiny bit of difference in production quality there that I, I could probably hear because I know this track so well. Um, maybe you wouldn't be able to hear it. But yeah, a really kind of useful tool. Um, again, I would just recommend being very careful with it, what you do and what you take. But great way of getting some vocals from a classic track if you want to remix it. Just be very careful with the way that you use this.